All right then, so the first layout that we're going to create is this one right here. It's called Globe Roma, and it's like a little blog site or something like that. And we're using CSS Grid in a couple of different places on this design. So first of all, down here, we can see that we have three article previews, if you like, and these are split up into three columns. So each one takes up a full column in width. So our CSS Grid is going to have three columns of equal width, right? And that's how these are displayed, but also we're displaying this featured article at the top on that same grid as well. Only this time it spans across all three columns in width. So the first article takes up all three columns of width and any subsequent articles take up a single column in width. Now the cool thing about this design is that we're also using a nested grid to display this information right here in this image. So we have the original grid with three columns and this article right here is taking up all three columns but that article in itself we also say display that as a grid as well and inside that grid have two columns this time one column on the left for the image and one column on the right for the text and if we inspect this open this up like so i'm going to just get rid of that and refresh now, if we click on this grid right here, which is the grid container, the whole thing, we can see those three columns, right? And let me make this a bit bigger so we can see it spread out originally how it was. So all of these three columns right here. And also, if we click on this first article right here, this featured article, we can see this is displayed as grid as well. If we click on that and take off the other one, we can see that this thing right here has two columns. All right, so there are two different grids. So this is the project and layout that we're going to build in this lesson. And also remember, you can get the starter files for each project from the GitHub repo. The link is down below the video. So just go to starter files from the branch drop down and download a zip folder of that. And we're going to be working inside this multi column folder in this particular lesson. And inside there we have these starter files, which I'm going to go through now. So again, inside the starter folder, the starter files for this project, we have an index.html file. Nothing in there at the minute inside the body, but we do have this link to the styles.css file, which is over here. And inside there, nothing special. We just have this font import from Google Fonts, which is pop-ins, and we use that in the body, give the body a margin and a background of this very pale green color. We strip out the padding and the list style type from UL and LI tags. Then for H1, H2, and H3, we give it this kind of gray green color and a similar one for paragraph tags as well. So dead simple styles, nothing to do with grid yet. And then finally, we have an image folder where we have three images, all from Unsplash. I got these. So just stock images, and we're gonna use those in our design. So I've already opened this up by right clicking and going to open with live server and it looks something like this at the minute, just a green background. So now what I'd like to do is get cracking on the HTML template first of all. So to begin with, I'm gonna do a header for the top of the page and this is nothing to do with grid. There's gonna be no CSS grid applied to the header at all. This is just so we can have a title at the top which is Globe Roma. So that's the name of the site. And then below that, we've got our main content. Now this is gonna be a grid. So we'll give this a class of grid container, but again, you can call this class whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have to be grid container. And also it should be grid, not good. Grid container, all right. So inside this now we have several different articles. We have four in total, remember. One which went the whole way across the page, the featured article, and then three others that sat underneath. So we need to make four articles. I'm gonna do an article at the top right here, first of all, and then the first thing in each article is gonna be an image. Now this first image is gonna come from inside the images folder, and it's gonna be this one, one, okay? So the source is gonna be image, and then forward slash one dot png and then for the alt tag we'll just say featured image like so all right then so then underneath that image we're going to have a div for all of the actual text content and inside that div we're going to have an h2 for the title of the article and we'll say this is balloon magic like so and then below that, a paragraph tag with a load of lorem ipsum. Now I'm just gonna copy and paste this lorem ipsum. So let me copy it and paste it right here. But as well, a little tip, if you wanna just generate some lorem ipsum in VS Code, you can type lorem and then how many words you want, for example, 20, and then hit tab and it generates 20 words of lorem ipsum, all right? 
So anyway, that's the first article pretty much done there. So this one is going to be the featured article. So let's give this a class and that class is going to be featured like so. All right then. So now we can move on to the next articles. I'm going to do another article tag down here. And then inside here, we're going to have pretty much the same thing. So we need an image tag, first of all. So let's do that. And I'll tell you what, for this one, we'll just use the same image. So this one right here should be one, not a. So I'm going to copy that source and paste it in here. And we'll just say article image like so for the alt tag. Now, ideally, it would be a different image, but I only have three, so it doesn't really matter. And then below the image, we again want a div for the text content. Now this time, because it's not the featured article, I don't want it to be an H2, I want it to be an H3. So let's do an H3 there. And again, this is gonna be balloon magic. And then down here, we'll do a paragraph tag. And I'm just gonna say lorem 20 to generate some lorem ipsum for this. And then down here, in fact, I think that's pretty much it, yeah. So we'll just copy this article now and let's paste it in here and change this to two. We'll also change the title from Balloon Magic to Road to Freedom, like so. And then below that article, I'm gonna paste in another one and we'll change this to three and also change the title to the clear blue, like so. All right then, so now we have those three articles. In fact, four articles. We have the featured one up here and the other three down below. And that is pretty much it for the template. So if we save this now and preview over here in the browser, it looks tripe, but at least we can see we have all of those articles. So the next thing to do is create a grid using this main tag right here and this class grid container in the CSS. So then let's start by just styling the header, first of all, the stuff at the top of the page. That's just this thing. And like I said before, it's got nothing to do with CSS grid this, but we'll make it look nice anyway. So we'll give this a max width of 1200 pixels and we'll give it a margin of 40 pixels, top and bottom, auto left and right. So it sits in a central column of 1200 pixels in the middle of the screen and the border bottom is going to be one pixel solid and then hash, and it's gonna be BBC7C7, like so. And this gives us kind of like a lightish green color. I'm gonna save that so we can preview it, and we can just about see this border at the bottom. So that's the header done. So now we can move on to the grid container. So we'll say grid hyphen container, and we need to display this as grid, first of all, to make it a grid, so display grid. And then below that, I'm gonna do the columns. Now we want three columns in total because for the three bottom articles, they need to go in three individual columns, all of equal width. So we'll say grid, template, columns, and each one is gonna be one fraction, so they're all the same width. So one fraction, one fraction, one fraction. Now also, I'm gonna apply a grid gap between each column, and that's gonna be 60 pixels. And when we use gap, that's in the column direction, so a gap between the columns, but also between rows as well, all right? And then also, like the header, we wanna give this a max width of 100, or rather 1,200 pixels, like so, and we'll say the margin is 20 pixels, top and bottom this time, auto left and right. So let me save that now, and let's preview this. All right, so looking a bit strange at the minute. It goes way over here. So we have these three columns, but, it's taking up way too much room, right? Why is it doing that? Well, remember, the content itself kind of dictates either the height of rows or the width of columns. However, since we gave this a max width of 100 or rather 1,200 pixels, what we can do is say, look, I don't want the images to be more than 100% in width of the column that they've been assigned to. So what I could do is come down here and say article image like so, and also article dot featured image like so. If I can spell correctly, that is what is going on. There we go. So we're grabbing both of those images and I'm gonna say the width of those images should be 100%. And that means that now they're gonna take up 100% width of the column that they've been assigned to. So now if we take a look at this, we can see they're no bigger 
than the columns, all right? Cool, so I'm also gonna give each of the images a border, which is four pixels solid, and it's gonna be white, like so, and a border radius to soften the corners, so border hyphen radius, and that's gonna be eight pixels. Save that and preview. All right, looking pretty nice, cool. Okay, so we have these articles, but remember, it was the last three that I wanted to display like this here. And what we're doing is displaying the first three that way. Now the first one should span the entire width of the grid, so three columns. And then automatically, this will be assigned a column underneath, this a column underneath, and this a column underneath. So let's work on this one right here, so the featured article. So I'm gonna place this right here, article, dot featured like so and inside here I'm gonna say grid hyphen column remember this is how we assign specific columns to items and all I want to do is say span three I don't have to set the starting point because automatically it's the first one in the grid and it's gonna take up that original default position at the start of the grid so that's all I need to do I need to say span three to take up all three columns in width so let me save this and preview and we can see okay it does take up the full width and then automatically these go underneath to the next row and they all take up one column in width so that's looking pretty good but i also said that i wanted this right here this article to display as grid as well so this itself is a grid so that we can have two columns one on the left for the image and one on the right for the text so let's try doing that now so to make this a grid again i have to say display grid like so because at the minute it's a grid item but it can also be a grid as well so it has columns inside it and we need to specify those columns as well so grid template columns like so and by the way when we have a grid within a grid like this we call it a nested grid okay because we have the main grid right here of which this is a grid item but also this is displayed as grid so this is a nested grid all right, so the grid template columns are gonna be one fraction on the left and one fraction on the right, so two columns of equal width. We also want a grid gap, so I'm gonna say gap is 60 pixels, and I'm also gonna use align items. In fact, we'll come to that in a minute, just so we can see what this looks like before we do that. All right, so it looks a bit better. We have the image on the left and the text on the right, but I was just about to use align items and then set it to be center so that vertically, in the row, the content sits in the center. So rather than this being at the top over here, it would be in the center right here. So let's do that. We'll say align items and set that to be center like so. Save it and preview. And that to me looks a little bit better. All right, so just a couple more simple styles to finish this off. A border bottom, which is gonna be one pixel solid. And then it's gonna be BB C7 c7 like so save that and now we can see that border but we need a bit of padding as well so we'll say padding bottom is going to be 40 pixels and i think that should be just about enough awesome okay so the only thing i'd like to do is just apply a bit of margin to the paragraph tags and also to the h3 so these things down here what i'm going to do is at the very bottom say article P and also article H3 like so and I'm going to apply a bit of margin to those margin is going to be 20 pixels and 10 pixels so 20 up and down 10 left and right save it and okay yeah that looks a little bit better cool so that's pretty much it for the desktop version next up I want to make it so that when we go to smaller screen sizes it doesn't look pants because at the minute it's all rather squashed so we need to do some media queries at different screen widths and the first width i'm going to do is around about 980 pixels so if i just inspect over here so we can see the width of the browser up here it's going to show it here as i move this you can see that yeah so this at the minute is around about 1090 pixels when i get to 980 pixels roughly here it starts to look a little bit squashed. This is the point that I want to start changing how the grid looks. Now, normally when I'm mocking up a website, I would adopt 
a mobile first approach meaning I would do all my styles for mobile size screens this size first of all and then work my way upwards okay however for the sake of this series because I want the focus to be on CSS grid and we're kind of making the desktop versions first and keeping the focus on CSS grid we're going to work the opposite way so I'm going to work from desktop to mobile but like I said it's probably best practice to go from mobile and then to desktop all right so let's cross this off and let's start work on the mobile styles so first up then I'm going to come down here and just add in a little comment to say these are the responsive styles we need a media query so at media it's going to be for screens so screen and and then the condition which is going to be max hyphen width and the max width is going to be 908 pixels so basically we're targeting any screen which is 980 pixels or less all right so remember when we inspected the element over here and we got to about 908 pixels roughly here then at this point and down we're going to go with these new styles that we apply here and they're basically just going to override these ones up here where we create new ones okay now all i want to do actually is target the article tags themselves so each one of these this 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 and this and i just want to make them span three columns so they're all full width in essence so what i'm going to do is say article and then open that up and then i'll say grid hyphen column and span three okay so if i save this now notice above 980 pixels they're all in one column each this one's in three columns but that's the case on all screen sizes but when we get to 908 pixels the bottom three as well they go full width so we can see three full width articles the problem is the images are full width and the text is full width and that just looks a bit daft and i would prefer it if we had something a bit more like this at the top so let's go back over here and what we can do is we can display all of these as grid much like we did for the featured article up here if we go to the featured one we set that to display as grid and then we gave grid template columns a value of one fraction one fraction and also a gap of 60 pixels and we aligned the items to the center we're going to do pretty much the same now for each one of those other articles so let me in fact just copy those properties and get rid of this paste them in like so and now each one of those other articles should look pretty much the same all right so now all of the articles look pretty nice as we go down all right cool so that will do for this screen size but when we get a bit smaller to so round about 760 pixels or thereabouts roughly here i want to change the look again so what i'm going to do is another media query so at media screen and max hyphen width this time is 760 pixels and in that case i want to take the article and also the article with a class of featured because we want to overwrite those rules as well and we want to set the display to be block so no longer grid and that means that the text and the image are not going to sit side by side for small screens because that looks a bit daft but instead they're going to sit one on top of the other so the image first then the text underneath okay so display block and also we'll give each one a margin of zero top and bottom 20 pixels left and right just to bring them away from the edges so let's see if this works i'm going to go down to a smaller screen and yep there we go that looks pretty nice okay so for small screens they're all stacking on top of each other when we get a little larger then they still stack on top of each other but the text and the image go side by side and for desktop screens we have these three columns with one article in each column all right so then my friends that is the first layout pretty much done all right so i know it's not a fully polished layout and we're not going to get any design awards for this but this is just basically a skeleton layout that you can use and adapt for your own websites and i'm sure you will make them look better so that's the first one out of the way next up we're going to go ahead and design something known as the holy grail layout